Hello everyone. So, so far what we've done is to find the derivative of a function using the first principle, using the part rule. We've also looked at the derivative of exponential functions as well as the trigonometry functions. So today we'll be looking at the derivative of a constant function. A constant function means the function is just a number. It could be 5, negative 3 over 2, any number that is in the real number system. Okay, so if y is equal to n times x, where n is in the real number, then dy dx using the part rule is multiply the index by the n, so 1 times n x to the power 1 minus 1, and this is equal to n x to the power 0, which is n. Now we're looking at when the function is just a constant, n. We know that a constant is the same as that constant times 1, but 1 is x to the power 0, okay? So dy dx is equal to multiply the 0 by the number n and then x. So we have 0 times nx to the power 0, subtract 1 from the 0, and this simplify. We know that 0 times any number is equal to 0, so it means I don't need to worry myself knowing what this will give me. So this automatically is equal to zero. That means if y is equal to negative seven over two, then dy dx is equal to seven over two. Negative seven over two is the same as negative seven over two times x to the power zero. Using the power rule, dy dx is multiply the zero by the number. So zero times negative seven over two x to the power zero minus one. Zero times any number. Is zero. So the derivative of a constant is always equal to zero. However, the limit of a constant is always equal to the constant itself. Okay, so note the difference. If you find the derivative of a constant is always equal to zero, but the limit of a constant is always equal to the constant itself. Okay, so if the function is a constant 5, then dy dx is equal to you guess that right equal to zero because function is a constant and using the power rule we know the constant is times x to the power zero zero times zero five x to the power negative one is equal to zero okay all right so let's look at functions that are combination of other functions the example is if y is equal to f plus g where f and g are constant then dy dx is equal to differentiate the function term by term. Differentiate f, the operator, differentiate g. Okay, so if you differentiate f, we get f prime. The operator, if you differentiate g, we get g prime. Okay, so if y is equal to x to the power 4 plus 2x squared, then dy dx is equal to differentiate this function, the operator, differentiate the other function. Differentiating x to the power 4 is 4x cubed. The operator, differentiating this gives us 4x. All right. Another example, if dy dx is equal to cos x plus sine x, then dy dx is equal to let's make it more fun plus e to the power x then dy dx is differentiating cos i know it's equal to negative sine x the operator differentiating sine is equal to negative if you differentiate sine you get sorry positive cos x then plus if you differentiate this function it e to the power x so this is equal to negative sine of x plus cos of x plus e to the power x okay